So with the release of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, Apple introduced a bunch of new features. Well, new to the iPhone, that is. While the world goes crazy about these features, a lot of people don't remember or just don't know that these features go way back. So let's go ahead and take a look at where some of these iPhone 7 and 7 Plus features really come from. Alright, so starting off with the dual cameras. So the first smartphone that comes to mind when thinking about dual cameras is the HTC M8, which was released in spring of 2014. But dual lenses on smartphones actually go all the way back to February 2011. Enter the LG Optimus 3D. You could also include the HTC Evo 3D, which was launched a month later. Now the main focus of the dual lens system on these two phones was to take 3D videos and photos as both devices had 3D displays. Yeah, we all know what happened with 3D, and this just really didn't work out too well. Now fast forward to the HTC M8, which was released in spring 2014. This phone brought in dual lenses to create a better sense of depth in your photos. And this is one of the things that the iPhone 7 is doing now. The feature was a great idea, but the camera itself on the M8 wasn't great at all. Fast forward two years later to the LG G5. This phone also brought in dual lenses with a 16 megapixel camera for regular shots and an 8 megapixel camera for wide angle shots. The 8 megapixel camera had a 135 degree lens which brought some great crispy wide angle shots. This feature works very well and it's something that I hope to see on future dual lens phones. Thus we have the newly announced LG V20. And just like the G5, the cameras on this phone look to provide a faux optical zoom so that you can get super close to your subject just like the the iPhone 7 Plus does. Dual lens tech continues in 2016 with Huawei's P9 released in April and the Honor 8 released in August. Both of these phones sport dual 12 megapixel sensors, one with an RGB sensor to capture color and the other lens used as a monochrome sensor. The purpose here was to create better looking photos overall, some very nice depth of field, and they were executed very nicely on both. And to be honest, it's kind of sad that the dual lens system is coming to the iPhone 7 Plus and the 7 Plus only, not the regular 7. Next up we have IP67 water and dust resistance. We've had water resistant and waterproof phones for years. The first phone that comes to mind is the Sony Xperia Z from 2013, but this actually goes all the way back to October 1st, 2010 with the Motorola Defy. This was the first water resistant Android phone. Now zooming back to 2013, we saw Sony's Xperia Z on February 9, which made it the first sleek, non-ugly waterproof Android phone. Now just months later on June 21st, Samsung released the Galaxy S4 Active, which had IP67 dust and water resistance. Now this trend of ruggedized versions of flagship smartphones continued with the S5 Active, the S6 Active, and the S7 Active, all being water and dust resistant. Now the following spring, April 11, 2014, came the Galaxy S5, which was Samsung's first flagship with that IP67 rating. But the following year with the Galaxy S6, Samsung decided to take a break from giving their flagship that IP rating and just left that with the S6 active. Samsung's 2016 flagships brought back the water resistance with the S7 and the Note 7 without sacrificing design. There's also the fact that Motorola released the Moto Z Force, which has a beautiful design as well, but it has a shatterproof display, which is something that the iPhone 7 does not offer. Next up, we have Race to Wake. It's another feature smartphones have had for a while with Nokia's Glance feature, which I almost forgot about. We've seen it on older Lumia devices and even Nokia's N8 from 2010. Motorola took that idea, created active display, claimed that they were the originators of it as other OEMs like LG and Samsung took it and made it their own. On older devices like the Nexus 6, we saw ambient display, which to this day is still a feature on the Nexus 6P, and some early Galaxy S devices had a feature where if you waved your hand over the display, it would wake up but only enough so that you could see what notifications were present didn't work too well. Moving up to more current devices like the LG G5, the V10, V20, S7, S7 Edge, and Note 7 all have something called always on display. With the AMOLED panels on the Galaxy devices, this allows for the display to still be on even while the device is asleep, where only a certain area of the screen is lit up to display notifications, battery level, date, time, and more. The iPhone does not have this. Next up is no headphone jack. Come on, you all saw this coming. Back in October 2014, Oppo pushed out a smartphone that was too thin for a headphone jack, the Oppo R5. Leiko launched three smartphones without a headphone jack back in April of this year, and with the more recent Moto Z and Moto Z Forced, we saw the first major smartphones without a headphone jack. So it's not like this is necessarily a good thing, it's just that Apple wasn't the first to do it. And then we have stereo speakers. 
The first major smartphone that comes to mind is the HTC One M7 that was released back in March 2013. This brought a whole new level of sound quality to mobile devices that continued with the M8 and the M9. The iPhone 7 has a front-facing speaker on top and a second one on the bottom. This design was first seen on the HTC 10, which was released May this year. Now, true front-facing speakers have been seen on multiple smartphones like the Nexus 6, the 6P, Moto X Pure. Phones from this year like the Alcatel Idol 4S and the Axon 7 all have stereo front-facing speakers. And I know what you're gonna say, unfortunately Samsung is still behind in this category. But wait a second, Samsung's Nexus 10 tablet had front-facing speakers. I just wish that they would put it on their smartphones maybe next year. Now before we wrap up the video, I just wanted to bring up some honorable mentions. The iPhone finally has a quad-core chipset. Now Android phones have had these since 2011, starting with the HTC Edge. Yeah. But honestly, it didn't really look like iPhones have needed it, so props to Apple for making their devices fast without an impressive spec sheet. The other honorable mention is something that iPhones don't even have yet, and that's 2K displays. Now while the Retina display is something nice to look at, it's still a 1080p panel. It's sad, especially on the bigger iPhones. Countless Android phones have had Quad HD panels for quite a while, while Sony actually put out a smartphone with a 4K panel. What the heck? After spending a lot of time with Samsung's 2K AMOLED panels, it spoiled me, hoping that one day Apple equips its iPhones with a display worth talking about. So that pretty much does it for the video. This video was not made to bash Apple or anything like that. Companies take ideas from other companies all the time. It's nothing new. But when a company as big and as popular as Apple puts features on their phones that have been out for quite a while, we find it a good idea to remind you guys where these features started. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the Android Police channel if you haven't already. Go ahead and comment your thoughts on this video. We'd love to hear from you. That does it for me. I'll talk to you guys later, and thanks for watching.